Dear Jim, thank you for sharing your, our enthusiasm for the 97 Plymouth Prowler. Welcome back to Leagues Eye Performance. Got something real special here for you today. Taking us way back to the 90s. Even when I was a kid, I was still a car fanatic. So one thing I used to get my mom to do is take me to the dealership. I would just pick up these brochures. Well, just the other day, I was going through a bag of stuff that I had gotten from my dad's attic last year sometime. And I forgot that I had gotten these and kept them. July 25th, 1997 is when this was postmarked. It was sent to me in my old address from, from Plymouth Prowler, P.O. Box 3109, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, 48302-3109. Look, it's got the little Plymouth logo. You know, Plymouth's dead now. You know, there's no more Plymouth. But first, before we get to that, let's check out what we got here. 1999 Chrysler LHS. Check out that logo. That is so cool. It's almost like a raised 3D kind of thing. So we'll check this out real quick. We'll just kind of flip through this stuff real quick. We won't spend a lot of time on it, but wow. The old, the, the LH platform cars. Just kind of gives you a overview of what it looked like. Guarantee you're not gonna go to the junkyard and find one this clean. Ooh, perforated leather, nice. Camel, that was a big Chrysler thing back in the day. They had camel leather everything. I wanted camel leather and I don't need more, but. This is Champagne Pearl Metallic. 3.5 liter high output. The 3.5 liter high output V6 had a vigorous 253 horsepower deep cranberry pearl coat. That's a cool shot, that's a cool shot. In 55, it was a passion for performance that installed a Hemi engine in the Chrysler 300 to launch the most powerful full-size car in the world. Pass through, that's cool. Two types of wheels, that's all you get. 253 horsepower, 255 pound foot of torque at 3,950. The colors for the LHS were kind of bland actually. They, nothing bright. Good tell it's old people's car. Three types of leather, you only get leather. The 1999 Chrysler lineup. This is the 1999 Dodge Intrepid. I've had a couple of Dodge Intrepids. I had the body style before this. I actually had a 94, 1994 Dodge Intrepid. I had a base model. A cloth interior, bench front seat, and fold down armrest. It was weird. I always wanted an Intrepid ES with auto stick. That was my huge thing. I wanted one so bad. 3.2, 24 valve, four speed automatic with auto stick. So this is the Dodge Intrepid. That flame red color is just brilliant. Look at that, candy apple red. This is the base model Intrepid, 2.7 liter. The interior looks great. That's that bright platinum color. Interior looks great, You got, and I, let me tell you, anyone really makes seats like this anymore. I mean, look at that padding. Look how freaking thick that padding is from like here to the top of that I mean that's probably like that much padding there's your stereo systems that's insane god what a cool picture yes showing candy apple red that candy apple red color is just something else it's all the standard options and all your wheel options there were three options and there's the awesome Dodge lineup you know from Chrysler at the time the new Dodge. Look at the wheels. Those are like the RT wheels on that Grand Caravan. Durango, Intrepid, Ram, Neon, Avenger, and then the Stratus and the Cirrus were the same car. Obviously my dream car right there, Dodge Viper RT10, if I could afford one someday. Dakota, and then of course that, that van. So we're all about to change. 1999 Chrysler 300, 55 to 58 model Hemi 300, deep slate pearl. The 300M 
got the three five liter high output. Oh, uh, remember the gauges in the Chryslers? They lit up like a electroluminescent gauges, which was really awesome. Had auto stick, like the Intrepids. Dang, look at that. I love, love, love the gauges in the Chryslers. I always thought that was really cool. I like the Intrepids too, but. And they always had that, they always had the clock, which was really cool. Good, good shot of the gauges. Looked really good. Infinity 2 Spatial Imaging Sound System, 320 watt amp with 11 speakers in nine locations for full, rich production. This is the 99 Dakota. It was a 99 Dodge Dakota club cab. So it was just like this. It was just exactly like same wheels, same tires, the Goodyear Wrangler uh, RTS, four wheel drive, and it was a Dakota Sport and it had the 5.2 liter V8 in it. Had the 5.2 V8, but it was a stick shift. It was a five speed. It was a four speed with overdrive in the floor. You shifted gears with a clutch. It was insane. Tell me if you've ever seen one before. I've never seen one ever since then. I've never, ever seen one. Look at that, isn't that nice? Saw a guy one time went to this little house party. He had one of these. He had a 5.9 RT. It was a regular cab truck and it had a 250 horsepower Magnum 5.9 V8. That dude got in his nice truck, right? And pulled out of the driveway and matted it and it roasted the tires off of it. I mean, it was just not real good for a teenager to have, but a teenager had one. And uh, he, he ran it into a house across the street. I know we all scattered because the police were on the way. <laughs> Dodge Dakota Sport in solar yellow. I, that color actually looked really good person. 5.9 RT Club Cab. That right there is pretty freaking cool. They had four engine choices for the Dakota. They had the inline four, 120 horsepower. The 3.9 V6 with 175 horsepower. 5.2, 230 horsepower. The Magnum 5.9 was only available on this RT. 345 pound foot of torque at 3200 RPM. <laughs> Doesn't that look nice? I never saw one with that color, but that right there is a cool color. That would be a rare find. Here's what the clunky interior looked like. Overhead console, cup holders, cassette tape. So it had, it had cassette tape. I remember they had cassette tape. You didn't, the CD player was an option. You could do CDs, but it was definitely a, an extra cost and it wasn't cheap. Club cast sport with SLT interior shown in mist gray. So this was the, instead of getting leather, as your top of the line option, this was the top of the line option. The SLT interior, cloth interior, 5.2 with a five speed manual, club cab, sport, right here, 25B. Had air conditioning. Air conditioning was an option on all of these. Limited slip diff. It had analog brakes, which was optional. It had the heavy duty service group because it had 22 gallon and it had the engine cooler. It had fog lamp. Oh, it did have the six by nine folding mirrors. It had a dimming rear view mirror, which is crazy. It had power windows, power door locks, and remote keyless entry. Yep. It had like every option, except that it was just a five speed manual. Power convenient, get plate. I always thought this was cool too. Dodge had their own line of truck accessories at the time. So they had like these body color brush guards and stuff. I remember this one guy came in, you know, they would get like a new Ram. I want all that. I want my truck to look like that. You know, so they would order a truck and it would come from Dodge. They would build it in a factory and they would actually factory install these options and it would come on the trailer. Here's all the colors. They actually had a lot of colors. Look at the bright colors. So that truck that I drove was a bright white, which was actually a really nice looking truck. That would have been a really nice truck with like some nice rims on it with some larger tires. Dodge at the time back then, their four wheel drive trucks sat really high. Even their Rams sat really high, a lot higher than they do today. Had a lot of wheel well. Tires and wheels would have been no problem in, in this era. 99 Ram pickup, the new Dodge. I drove one of these identical to this truck right here. Had a uh, 5.2 in it and it was actually a pretty nice truck. Cloth interior. So in 99, you could get a Ram with leather interior. Flame red and light driftwood. So it's a two-tone. This was big back then. This was big. Doing the light driftwood on the bottom. Look at that, leather wrap steering wheel. I bet you anything that the Dakota steering wheel was the same, probably the cluster even, but I bet you could have taken a Ram steering wheel with leather wrap and put it on a Dakota. Fold down center armrest, hold laptops, palm tops, and cell phones. That was one cool thing about the Ram. It had this huge folding center console that was flat on top. It had nothing on top of it. Well, it was really nice because right on it, it was like a riding surface, like a work surface. 
It was really nice. It had your flip down cup holders from the dash, which was really nice. The seat belts were integrated into the seat, so that way you could open the doors because it was a quad cab. Quad cab allowed you to open the swinging doors, you know, the uh, clamshell doors could open on both sides of driver or passenger, whereas the F-150 still only had like a third opening door on this opening. This door with only one of those. There was no crew cab. There was no crew cab configuration in trucks hardly at all. That's what the interior looked like. It had the same cloth interior as like the Dakota with that weird kind of multicolored cloth interior. I wanted one of those. I wanted one of those so bad I could not stand it. I wanted one. I was like, man, I'm so good again. I'm like 16, 17 years old. I'd have broke that thing. I'd have broke it, I'd have wrecked it. I don't know what I would have done with it, but it probably wouldn't have been good. But wow, see how these moldings are right here? They're like plastic and they're stuck on with like self-adhesive tape. So it's like an emblem, right? It's actually an emblem. But on the sports, look, it's a decal. So it's not raised, it's just a decal. So you get the decal here, you get the decal here, the sport, you get the clear headlamps right here. You get this different front body color bumper that's molded with the uh, fog lights that are inset here, the round fog lights, because the, uh, all of them look like this. They had fog lights right here, you know, in the bumper, and then you had a, the metal bumper with the plastic top, plastic bottom. Uh, but the Sport had this full molded bumper cover, you know, and then it had the body color. I was all about this body color stuff. I love the sports body color bumpers and built in looking and all that stuff in this era was this truck was the game changer for that. You know, nobody else had a truck like this in 99. Sport 1500 5.9 V8. This is a 2500 quad cab sport in black, which is, that was a cool truck. If you can get that and that has a Cummins. Cummins 24 valve turbo diesel. That would have been a cool truck to have too back then. Twister is one of my favorite freaking movies. And when that movie came out, I was stoked because it had a flame red freaking Dodge Ram 1500 four wheel drive club cab SLT in that truck. There's a couple of shots where they show a 2500 Ram, which is crazy. If it had these mirrors, then it was a 98 or up. If it did not have these mirrors and had the other chrome style, it would have been a 97 and below. Cummins engine. So this is with the four speed automatic, which is the optional transmission. The five speed manual was the standard uh, option. And most of the Cummins that I ever saw come on our lot were stick shift. Four speed automatic, which was the optional, optional engine, had 215 horsepower, 420 torque. Five speed manual, had 235 horsepower, so it had 20 more horsepower, and it had 460 torque, so it had more torque. Just flat out work. Chassis cab version, so you could snow plow whatever you wanted to do. That's when they, we kind of started getting into computer modeling back then. I think this truck was actually designed in CAD. That's the only time I saw a heavy duty truck back then. In 99, it was doing this. Look, Featherlight, that's awesome. So I worked for a company a long time ago. We sold Featherlight trailers, and so I respect them a lot. I've worked on them. I've pulled them. One of the best trailers I think you could ever own, ever. Light driftwood. So like that two-tone, that color that typically they're doing on the bottom of this era truck, this whole truck is painted in that color. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Slide rear window. It had double slides, so there was two windows back then, which you know, leaks after it gets pretty old. Leaks, 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 leaks. That's crazy. Accessories. I don't know why this is circled. I didn't circle this. I must have gotten it from the dealership circled. But yeah, I mean, there's that, see that's circled though. I don't know. But back then I would have wanted solar yellow with camel leather is what I would have wanted. With these wheels, no C, which would have been the polished it would have been polished forged aluminum five bolt five bolt i thought there was oh the okay so the full-size truck was a five lug but the dakota was six lug why does that make sense that don't make sense whatever all the color choices still love that flame red flame red crazy awesome 
This is the 1999 F-Series line. My grandfather had a 96 F-150. That was the last year of the old body styles. 97 is when this body style came out. That's here, 90, shown here in 99. And then in 99, the Super Duty came out. That's the new 99 Super Duty. This was the start of that era of truck, which is essentially still what the truck is today. This is an XLT, I think, with a sport group because it's got this different grill on it and it looks like it's a it's body color and it has like the lariat type honeycomb grill i think that's only on the sport and these I think that that body color stuff i think is all sport because i think the xlt's had a chrome grill so pretty sure and chrome skull caps and the whole nine so this is a sport right here new look up front for the f-150 250 is one that means business XLT flare side and black clear coat and available XLT sport group group available fall 98. Super cab models now provide the convenience of four doors. Oh, so now you can get in 99, so 98, 97, 98, only had three doors. The 99s came out with the, uh, the super cab had four doors, which is cool. Factory installed snapless 152-50 tunnel cover offered under 8,500 pounds. Fast, easy install, removal, great looks, improved tool economy. Number one selling pickup brand for 21 years. Look, the classic work truck right there. Excel Rather Cap 4x2 and Harvest Gold. There's the F-250. So a lot of you may not remember, but the you could get an F-250 in this body style. This is an F-250. These are seven lugs. Huh. So this is Dark Terrator Red F-250 XLT. So this is not a Super Duty. Super Duty was a whole new line for Ford. Whole new line. They were not built in the same facility as the F-150. But the F-150 line actually offered a upgraded axle options, ratio options and all, for a beefier suspension for towing with the with this body style so they had an f-250 that could give you the towing capacity that you needed like this see how he's hauling in bobcat with a, a utility trailer you couldn't do that with f-150 but you could do that with this f-250 but it's actually an f-150 with just upgraded axles basically so it it's a 5.4 triton tow up to 8700 pounds uh rear load leveling suspension and uh, see, that's what you get. I thought this was cool, good and clean. They started adding a factory seven pin uh, to the receiver um, on the towing packages. So if you got a towing package, you got a seven pin, which is was unheard of back then. Good old XLT interior right there. Very similar. You see there's a trend here. I mean, you look back at the, the Rams and Dakotas and look at this cloth interior. There is so similar audio options. That, the premium CD, you could actually get an N-6 disc changer at the time. That's the Lariat optional leather and the, the tan leather. The tan leather was like a big thing back then. I wanted that truck right there. That's what I wanted. But I wanted a 4x4 Super Crew with the tan leather interior. 4.62 valve V8. Oh, the 150 and 250 powered by the 4.6 have the highest maximum payload rating and a class when properly equipped. Net power, just over 200. The torque was 275-ish. Triton deep skirt block with cross-bolted main bearing, 5.4, just over 400 power. Cool. So that's, isn't that more? That's more than the Dodge, right? 5.4, two valve, almost 350 pound torque. Super duty, F-250 and 350. So class exclusive, lower window belt line near the outside mirror, improves visibility on the road. That's where we started getting this little deal. This little drop down, you know, even my F, my new F-150, my 19 F-150 has this. And it's to improve visibility. If you didn't know that, that's why they did that. It's to improve visibility with the mirror. There's a uh, 550 through rail filler neck. Chassis cab 4x2 Oxford White. You know, they still use Oxford White today. The truck's Oxford White. Most, uh, most heavy duty trucks had rear drums. Ford started the four wheel disc brakes front and rear. Super Duty interior with the tan leather interior and that's like all I ever saw. 542 valve F250, 325, 275, 68 
V10 Triton. That thing was a monster. 275 horsepower, 425 torque, 73 power stroke turbo diesel. Net power, horsepower, about 225. And the torque was 500. It had a 4R100 automatic. Official truck of NASCAR. Look at the logo. That's crazy. Future FFA right there. There's all your uh, body styles, uh, Super Duty cab configurations, and your F-150, 250 configurations. Dealer accessories. Insane. That was a good bit of accessories back then. I mean, for this time. There's all your colors, F-150, 250 paint colors, out for the same colors for both trucks, um, which is pretty cool. I like that bright red clear coat. It was a really nice color. The Oscar White, always a good go-to color. That was a weird color for me. I didn't like that color in, in, uh, in the Ford. I didn't like it. There's that freaking forest green, which is Amazon green for Ford. Deep Wedgwood Blue, that's a nice color. And obviously the black Terrator, or black black clear coat, sorry. That was my favorite wheel back then, which was F, and which is a 17-inch chrome wheel with a chrome hub, which came with the 4x4 off-road equipment group package. Super Duty wheel packages, 16-inch wheels for the dualies. That's actually, a, that was a really nice looking wheel. I remember a friend, my best friend back then, his dad, went and bought a brand new 99 F350 7.3 power stroke manual transmission. That thing was a monster. So I know you all been waiting on this one. I knew you would be. Okay, let's see. All this crap's rolled up, so bear with me. Thank you for contacting Plymouth Place Central. 721-1997. Prepare for Jim Weigel. 716-97. Incentive spec sheet. Oh, let's see. They, they gave me a letter. They gave me a letter. This is awesome. From where? You got to remember, this is 97. I was born in 81. Okay. I would have been, what, 16? <laughs> 16 years old when this came out. Dear Jim, thank you for sharing your, our enthusiasm for the 97 Plymouth Prowler. It is the support of people like you that has made it possible for the Prowler team to bring the car from original concept to production reality. The enclosed brochure will give you the basic 97 Plymouth Prowler product story. Oh, I have not looked at this by the way. Prowler is an un un unabashed tribute, what? to an original American art form, the street rod. We started with a dramatic expression of the great American roadster, borrowed automotive technology from the future, and added some of the best contemporary hardware to make Prowler ready to deliver the ultimate cruising experience. We really appreciate your interest. Sincerely, Martin Levine, General Manager, 97 Plymouth Brochure. This, this is the Plymouth lineup. They have the Plymouth Threes, the Plymouth Neon, you know, they had Dodge Neon, but also Plymouth Neon, Neon Pylon, and then the awesome Pinkman Prowler that uh, Tyler Hoovy has, the Pinkman one, which would be awesome. I'd love to find one. So it kind of gives you the overview of the, the Neon Expresso. I hated the interior, too. The, the interior was just, just so ugly. Plymouth Breeze. Like this car, the Breeze, you know, you would have gotten a Dodge Stratus, would have been the same car, same drivetrain, everything. But I think this car was actually cheap, cheaper than the Stratus. There's your Voyager. Lots of, lots and lots of space in the vans, of course. Chrysler collection from Mopar. So this must be like the options. Like the extras you can get with your Prowler. It's so huge. It's so severely difficult for me to... Let me see if I can find something heavy enough to hold this down. That's the brochure for the 1997 Plymouth Prowler. Could you imagine my thoughts as a 16-year-old when this came out? I was freaking stoked. I wanted one so freaking bad. And I had a Dodge Intrepid. So I had essentially a family member of this car, okay? Because if you don't know, this car was, a lot of the parts and pieces of this car were the same as like an Intrepid or, um, or you know, something like that. So, but it had that uh, 3.5 HO, the high output 3.5, out of like the LHS or the 300. So it had that same engine in it. 
but a lot of the other parts, the like Dodge parts and stuff that was used here in like the instrument cluster, almost comes straight out of the freaking Intrepid. Very difficult to uh, navigate this paper. Performance with an all-American mindset. Blinding white, salt fat, slick smoking quarter miles in small town Saturday night cruises. The salt Cadia computer programs forecast the obvious instant understeer straight out of the shade tree mechanic shop rod songbook. What? Rear drive transaxle, transaxle aids weight distribution. Rear wheel discs have composite rotors. I didn't know that. Node and clavis components are MIG and TIG welded. So there's your there's what the Prowler looks like underneath. That's the guts and glory of your Plymouth Prowler. So I think it's an aluminum frame. I think it's all aluminum frame. Like any other proper high boy roadster, Prowler's body sits atop a frame, but that's where the similarities end. Here's a set of rails that are extruded from 6061 and 6063, all aluminum alloys in T6 temper of its well under 3,000 pound weight, nearly a third is aluminum. Nestled up front is an ultra contemporary Rev Happy single overhead cam, 24 valve V6, puts out 214 horsepower at 5,850 RPM. That's actually less horsepower than uh, the LHS or 300, right? It was like 220 something. So you could easily do a computer modification and get a lot more out of it. The alloy suspension has its points of reference, both any car inboard mounted front shocks and exotic car automatic rear trans like the newest Ferrari 456 GTA. Prowler sits right is due in no small measure to its huge Goodyear extended mobility rubber 17 front and 20 rear with a built-in run flat capability. Auto stick stays in gear until you shift. Resonator produces a throaty free flow wrap. Stainless steel exhaust manifolds extract nicely. Looks swoopy. New tech extends even to non-through piercing rivets. Wow, that's cool. <clears throat> the body is concocted from a heady brew 5454 and 6022 aluminum alloy sheet molding compound and reaction injected molding urethane polymer and it's essentially retro grill imposingly called acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. How about that? Traditional and slippery vinyl tuck and roll interiors were 86th in favor of comfort and control accessibility. Leather trim, multi-position buckets, wall aluminum frames, and aluminum frame seats. A magnesium instrument panel cross member. Huh. Combines more than 20 conventional stamping and plastic components and single lighter casting gauges are traditional, circular, backlit, analog, and complete. Tack is steering column mounted because hot rodders and road racers have been right about that all along <laughs> seven speaker six disc cd sonic system by infinity produces 320 watts through a parametrically equalized 40 watt per each of eight channels amp so top down legal limit cruising doesn't blow the sounds away available trailer adds much cargo capacity see if you, you get no cargo capacity in a prowler you gotta buy the trailer <laughs> this is what the interior look like your plymouth prowler it was new, obviously. So cool. So freaking cool. Hang on a second. Let me flip to the next page. And there you have it, guys. That is the last page of the Plymouth 1997 Plymouth Prowler brochure. It is actually a full-size freaking poster of the Prowler. I did not realize that the brochure was a poster. That is freaking awesome. Tyler Hoovy has one of these. Go check out his channel. He has one of these. It is phenomenal. It is a really cool car. It is definitely not what you would expect out of something like that today. But that is pretty cool. Very, very, very cool. That would have been really cool to be on the design and test team for this car. That would have been really cool. That would have been right up my alley during those, that time frame. So, would have still loved to do that today. So, uh, moving on. So, next things up, it, this is the, uh, the posters behind it, but this is the brochure for the Chrysler Corporation collection from Mopar. So, obviously, this is going to be probably Prowler related accessories for the Plymouth 1997 Plymouth Prowler okay 
Let me get to the next page. Okay, so this is the next page, and yes, I'm exactly correct. This is the product line just for the Plymouth Prowler. It's a collection of purple stuff suitable for the Salt Flats, the Stop Light Grand Prix, or even the Executive Suite. Major League Leather Plymouth Prowler jacket. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it has a freaking Prowler logo on it when it says Plymouth Prowler. And um, it is, um, oh my God. Um, not sure if you can see the prices or not, but a small size or small, medium, normal people size, medium, large, extra large will be $665 and it goes up from there. T-shirts are, uh, there's two different kinds there and they are $11 to 16. There's the top down Knights jacket. So it's like a uh, windbreaker type, $75 jewelry collector's jewelry so this is a silver plated brightly polished three-dimensional cast prowler pin rivets attention on caps and jackets and the key fob is parking lot attendant memorable that's hilarious so there it, the key fobs like seven bucks and then ooh, an, another jacket here uh varsity jacket i guess it's like a little water form and it had some glue on it so see, there was like a little thing of glue on there, and obviously, I, this is how you ordered it. This is your little order form where you would order your accessories um, for shipping and the whole nine. I, obviously, I bet you couldn't order it today, but nice varsity jacket there. Looks like it starts at about two hundred thirty-three dollars fifty cents, and you gotta think about this is ninety-seven dollars. This is $19.97, not today's. I mean, this would be double that today. <laughs> a tie. Tie, $73.50. Pullover, $50. Coffee mugs, um, $7 to $20. Upscale, uh, so you get uh, polos. So they got polos, $33 to $51. The purple polo there is $50. What is 47 to 51 dollars sunglass plymouth prowler sunglasses shades in case seven dollars six dollars 95 cents button down 48 to 56 dollars caps roughly 15 dollars and then you get your freaking plymouth prowler purple duffel bag you get a duffel bag zippered hold alls and a keychain hanger $64 it's item p111 prowler carry all $64 for that duffel bag and there you have it folks 1997 plymouth prowler pretty freaking cool that is freaking cool it's so freaking cool i'm just telling you it's just cool to find something like this even like these brochures from 99 and that I just found by accident, didn't know I even kept them. I had many more brochures that I'm sure have been tossed, but these are the ones that I found. And when I saw this purple right here, I knew exactly what it was I remembered, because I remember having to send a letter to Plymouth to get this, okay? I had to actually send them a letter. I had to write a letter and send them a letter. I'd type it up and whatnot. You know, and being 16 years old, that was kind of difficult for me to do. It paid off, here I am you know, this many years later, and it still looks this extravagant, it looks this good, it's basically mint condition, except that it's very difficult to fold back out flat. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it all back up, I'm gonna put it in this little tube right here, and put it like a, and put it in a plastic bag so nothing can get in it, and then I'm gonna store it for the next 20 years. I'm gonna pull it out again in 20 years, and it's gonna be just as freaking exciting as it is today. So that's going to be a wrap for today, folks. I appreciate you checking out the awesome, awesome, awesome freaking brochures that I found in my stash of stuff in an old attic.